What is happening, New York Giant fans? Apologies if you hear airplanes or wind in the background. I'm at MetLife Stadium slash uh, Giants Quest Diagnostics Training Center, and day one of training camp is officially complete, and it was exciting to be out there, interact with other people, and just you know see the players back on the field. But anyway, two things to address before we get into the actual analysis of what happened today. Number one, the lines were out the fucking door. There were lines looping around the parking lot to get in. That shows you that there's a new energy in the building ever since last year. Because last year, the lines were not like that. Let me tell you something. I went to a lot of practices, and I got there at the same time I usually do. There was a line going out the door. We didn't get in until 10 after 10. So there's that. But it just shows you that Giant fans are excited about this new culture that Brian Dable and Joe Shane have brought. Speaking of that culture... When I was online for the bus this morning, I found out that the New York Giants have re-signed Andrew Thomas something around $117 million over the next five years. He's basically locked down through 2029, and I'm very excited. Andrew Thomas is one of my favorite players, and one of you know he's a fan favorite because guess what? We haven't had a Pro Bowl elite-level offensive lineman in so many years, and... You know, Daniel Jones, obviously, the contract extension was done. Dexter Lawrence, a few weeks before the Saquon tag and all that other bullshit happened, his extension was done. All that was left was for the Saquon stuff. So, he, you know, Joe Shane re-signed Saquon to a one-year deal, which obviously Saquon was at camp today. And then Andrew Thomas, who is a top-five tackle in this league, and just locking him down is absolutely great for this Giants team. It's great for the locker room. Uh, you know, I can't wait to keep watching Andrew Thomas dominate rushers on that left side. So that, those are just some thoughts on that. I was really excited this morning when I saw that. So anyway, let's actually dip into what happened today. A lot of 7-on-7 seven seven drills, not many 11-on-11s 11 11 and also some team drills, but you have to keep in mind it is only day one of camp. So to start, I will list the starting offensive lines because I think that's mostly key. At left tackle, Andrew Thomas for the ones. Joshua Izudu, left guard for the ones. Center Ben Bredesen, the center for the ones, next to Mark Lewinsky and Evan Neal. Next is the two team, Corey Cunningham at left tackle, Shane Lemieux at left guard, John Michael Schmitz at center. At number 77, Jack Anderson at the right guard position and Tyree Phillips at right tackle. And then for the third team, Matt Parrott at left tackle, Wyatt Davis at left guard. J.C. Hassenauer at center with Tyree Phillips and Corey Cunningham rotating at right guard with Devery Hamilton at the right tackle position. So there's a lot of things to take away from this just to start. And once again, things can improve as training camp goes on. They're not in a rush to put John Michael Schmitz at the center position for the one team. Now, he did get a couple of one reps, whether that be in seven on, actually, no, not seven on seven drills, whether that be in just walkthrough drills, whether that be in the 11 on 11 drills they did. But for the fair share of it, it was Zudu and Bredesen. So that tells you, you know, how much time are they going to give John Michael Schmitz? It also kind of go, begs a question here, who is going to take that left guard spot when, when uh, John Michael Schmitz is ready? Is it going to be Azudu? Is it going to be Bredesen? There's a lot of questions to dive in there, but of course, those will be answered as we go deeper in camp. So let me just get the defensive uh, lineups out right away, or at least some of the notables that uh, you guys may not know. So Darian Beavers was with the two, uh, the ones, excuse me. He was the second linebacker next to Bobby Okereke, so that's a note. Donnie Holmes started as the nickel corner. I think he gave up a touchdown or two, but with that being said, he wasn't too recognizable. As I said, it's you know, seven on seven drills, so we're going to see more as we go in. Obviously, the battle between him and Cordell Flott for that slot spot is being highlighted by almost everybody. And Jason Pinnock was the second safety next to Xavier McKinney. So Dane Belton was with the twos. So I guess it's a rotational thing. Maybe, you know, getting Dane Belton back up to speed. He did not play a ton in the second half last year. So we'll see what happens. Um, as I said, Dane Belton with the twos. Micah McFadden was also rotating in with Darian Beavers, but Beavers obviously got the load of the number one snaps next to Karake. And then Carter Coughlin was with the twos. 
But uh, with that being said as well, let's get into the offense. And I'm going to be honest here. Yes, it is day one of training camp, so you can't take too much away from it. But I thought it was a very offensive day. Uh, I thought the defense, you know, did the best they could in situations, but some players also struggled. There were two penalties that I counted on the defensive side, Javarius Owens and then another player who committed a holding penalty, I believe, on Colin Johnson. But the talk of the town right now is Darren Waller. Obviously, his first season as a New York Giant is going to be greatly highlighted, whether he could stay on the field or not, and he was absolutely uncoverable. Daniel Jones was throwing passes to him left and right, touchdown, you know, uh, not screen passes, but like short passes and whatnot. They did most of their, you know, focusing of the offense in the red zone, but Darren Waller, Darren Waller just right out dominated, and it's going to be interesting because I think he's going to be the biggest weapon in terms of, you know, a passing target that the Giants have had probably since Odell Beckham. That's my opinion, at least. Now, some other thoughts. I thought Daniel Jones was zipping it. I thought he looked good today. Maybe there was like one or two passes that he overthrew, but he was zipping it. No interceptions. A lot of tight window throws. He was throwing it a lot to Paris Campbell, Darren Waller, as mentioned, and then a little fewer to Daniel Bellinger and Isaiah Hodgins. So those are some notes. Everyone was excited for Barkley's return every time but Barkley would, you know, rush in a drill or maybe in seven-on-sevens. You know, the fans would be excited. So obviously, Giant fans are happy that he's back, and I think it would have been the opposite way, of course, if he didn't go and agree to that one-year contract. Also as well, Cole Beasley. He shared some snaps in the 7-on-7s seven on sevens and 11-on-11s 11 11s in the slot with the one team. He also caught a touchdown from Daniel Jones. So that tells you, obviously, they favor Beasley a little bit more. Jamison Crowder is on the PUP. Sterling Shepard on the PUP. Wandale Robinson on the PUP. So just when we thought we had 1,000 slot receivers, it's going down to the nitty-gritty in terms of the depth. But it is nice to see that Cole Beasley caught a touchdown, and caught a couple of passes from Daniel Jones, so that chemistry is hooking up. David Sills caught a couple of touchdown passes, mainly from Tyrod Taylor. Did not really go with the ones, so that's kind of surprising, knowing that Daniel Jones is buddy-buddy with him. But uh, with that being said, David Sills, I thought he looked good today. And two more takeaways. Bryce Ford Wheaton, who a lot of Giant fans have been looking forward to see in training camp, he made a couple of nice catches, a few circus catches, one towards the back of the end zone. There was a few more mixed in there that were thrown from guys like Tommy DeVito and uh, Tyrod Taylor as well. But Bryce Ford Wheaton had a good day. Now, where will he fit in terms of roster space? I have no idea, but we'll, uh, we'll find that out as training camp comes along and so the preseason as well. And then uh, just a random takeaway. I thought Tommy DeVito looked a little confused. Obviously, it's his first NFL training camp day. He's an undrafted free agent quarterback out of Illinois. A lot of rollouts for him, so uh, it's either the receiver's not getting separation or, you know, he's just confused in terms of reading the defense. But whatever, it's not something huge to take away. He's a developmental quarterback. So light takeaways from the defensive side. I thought Deontay Banks struggled a little bit. He gave up some touchdowns to Paris Campbell and also uh, Isaiah Hodgins. So you're going to get that. As I said, it was more of an offensive day, seven-on-sevens. You know, some situations, it's mostly one-on-one. -on -one. So I'm not going to blame him too much. He's a first-round rookie. He's going to struggle. But, uh, you know, something to just watch out for as we go through camp. Uh, Aziz with a nice rush on Evan Neal for one snap. That would have been a holding penalty. It ended up being an overthrow by Daniel Jones to Matt Breida. So there's that. Gary Brightwell also factored in in terms of snaps with the ones as the running back. Same thing once again with uh, Matt Breida. Uh, two other notes that I'll cap off before we end this little video right here. It looks like Raheem Nunez Roches did not practice uh, after somebody pointed out that he was not dressed. He was not in clothing. Um, well, I can't say he was not in clothing, but he was not in the jersey. He was not in the practice jersey and all that sort of stuff. Um, he was actually in a bucket hat, a sun hat. And, you know, some Giants clothing on in terms of, like, team wear, but it wasn't necessarily jersey type. So just something to monitor. And Jalen Hyatt left uh, with dehydration and heat exhaustion issues, but should be nothing major. And also he did get an end-around toss touchdown during the three-team, well, I should say third-team period uh, in the seven-on-seven. Seven. So that's all I got for today. I will try to record a little bit more tomorrow. 
because I didn't know how strict they were going to be. They said no filming in the beginning, but they didn't really enforce that. And I wasn't necessarily in a good position with them practicing on one field, meaning being on the other side, because of, obvi because of obviously the lines. So um, we'll see what happens tomorrow. I'm going to be here then. I'll probably be here on Friday as well. But uh, keep it in with the content, guys. Like, comment, subscribe, do all the good stuff. Turn on post notifications so you know when a live stream pops or drops. Appreciate y'all coming back. Football's back, and you better believe it. Let's go Giants, baby. I'll see you guys next time.